I walked through the subterranean corridors that encased over a thousand souls, whom had fled from the surface of the earth. Hell had unleashed itself upon humanity. I must ashamedly say that this tragedy had occurred due to human greed and overpopulation. Despite a myriad of warnings, politicians and business owners shut their ears to the facts. We began to gas ourselves with an overabundance of carbon which sat in our delicate atmosphere trapping heat. Once the ice caps melted and the sea began to absorb the heat, with the result of changing our climate to such a degree that our little blue pearl began to shake us off as if we were fleas on an elephant's back. It only took nature five years to decrease humanity from 11 billion to just 1 billion, sea levels rising while the forests were burning, alongside of which, floods and droughts were eroding the soil, limiting crop growth, hunger's spiky fingers began to tickle our tummies, the only thing is, no laughter could be heard, only the screams of pain which lead to war and the eventual near extinction of our species, I was born down here, and had never been above ground, I had seen lots of videos of how it used to be, and lots of videos of how it was now. I was on my way to see my sister Ruth. She had been born on the surface, and had been caught up in a horrific program known as the Great Blinding. This was a program designed to remove the eyes of children for the purpose of breeding. The idea behind this utter madness was, that they would not see or know who their breeding partners were. Alking into Ruth's office, I noticed that she was staring at some eyeballs on her computer screen. Hello sister. How did you know it was me? I could never forget the sound of those footsteps. Have you had some new implants? Yes I have. But they have not been fully calibrated yet. Vision is down by 75%. I'm sorry to hear that. What do I owe this unexpected pleasure? I need a little help. Do you need money? I could do with a few extra credits. Why? Are you still with the charity? No I've left that organization. Now my whole life has become a charity. Surly, you could do a little cleaning? Is that worthy of my education? I suppose not, so I'll ask again. Why do you need extra? I need to live on the surface for a little while. Is that a reason? One of our pipers has gone missing. What do you mean by our? The charity. I thought that I just heard you say that you had left that organization? Well I have, except for... Except for what? Who is the Piper? Nero. So you've lost him? I believe he might have been turned. I need to try and find him, and turn him back or shut him down. He knows far too much about us, who we are, where we are and what we are doing. How the hell do think you can survive on the surface considering that you have never even been above ground? I've seen videos. You cannot experience the real fear of survival or trying to survive by what's printed on a piece of celluloid. Come on Ruth, I'm a big girl now. You may well be, but the truth is that I have had reports of radiation sickness, no medicines or facilities. Hordes of cannibal gangs preying on the vulnerable. You might not know what or whom you were eating. Rumors, maybe. Do you really want to take that risk? After all, an attractive young female would draw considerable unwanted attention. What do suggest? You need a traveling companion who we both can trust. Who do you propose? Go to a bar called the Steam Room. It's on sub level 2. Ask for Margot. I trust her. She's done work for me in the past. She has knowledge of the surface, and the survival skills that you will need. How shall I know her? You won't have to. As I just said, she'll know you. Thanks. I decided to look for Margot that afternoon. I could locate her in a bar known as the Steam Room. My guess was that this place was the only bar in this subterranean world, as booze was an extremely hard product to obtain. A few black market entrepreneurs would peddle their moonshine, which tasted more like high-octane rocket fuel, rather than an ice glass of Chardonnay. Their illegal practices also had a tendency to drive one mad, or blind and in some cases even did both. We could grow grapes under grow light, only trouble was, that they did not taste at all like the fruit. Cannabis was far more lucrative. I could hear music echoing its way to my ears. Someone was playing a piano. I figured that if I followed the sound through the labyrinth of tunnels it might lead me to the steam room.
On entering the bar I was immediately struck with the performer. It was an artificial. How I hated them. They could not be trusted. This one looked like an animal, whose function must be bloody obvious. They were purchased by the wealthy to look after their children. Only problem was, some of them had a manufacturing fault, or circuit damage, and instead of shutting down, as in one case grabbed a chainsaw and began to dismember the family whilst eating Sunday lunch, shouting, now you know how that lamb must have felt. They were manufactured using high tension plastic and steel, which could not be penetrated by bullets, so the police had to use a shoulder held rocket launcher to stop the thing. The irony is, they all had cutesy names. This one was called Nana Cuddles. I mean it was not like having a faulty airbag or something like that. I finally spoke to the object, asking, had she seen Margot? Adding that I thought she played the piano exceptionally well. This was an oxymoron of sorts, as everything that these bots did was always beyond the skills of their original creators. It was my opinion, that it was the mass manufacture of these artificials that was the final nail in humanity's coffin. Humans had become lazy. And as the old saying said, the devil makes work for idle hands, and my had their hands become stained. She turned, saying that I must be Beth, and that she was expecting me. My gut squeezed in with that feeling of nausea, I replied in the affirmative, that I was. She continued, Ruth said you want to live above ground for a little while. Yes. I'm looking for Nero, we believe that he's gone rogue. I know him. I don't think he could be turned. Nero is tougher than he appears. Same factory, he has one third of human DNA in him you know. We played the same club circuit before the great meltdown. Then she surprised me, saying. I am of the opinion that you neither trust or are very comfortable with us. As this statement was true, and one's answer could not offend these creatures, I still denied this, saying that I was fine around artificials. We are very perceptive you know. Humans are easy for us to read. If we are going to travel and work together on the surface, then you must put your prejudice to one side, as it's a very dirty and dangerous place, and that both of our survival will be tested. Sometimes Ruth, I freaking hate you. You know how I feel about bots. How could you send me out there with that creature? I'm insisting on another human to accompany us. There must be someone? That's unacceptable. You know that. How do you know she? Or rather it has not been tampered with. You say that you would not forgive yourself if any harm came to me. Yet you send me up there with that thing. No. I won't hold my tongue. Of course I need to. Do you want this whole damn operation to be discovered, endangering us all? I'm not being over emotional. I've never trusted them. Why should I start now? What reason? That's blackmail. Why are you holding my feet to the fire? Just because you're my elder sister. Mother always said father favored you which gave you this superior complex. 